Hello, hello. Welcome to New Gameplay Today. I am your host, Wesley, and I'm joined by Game Informer's very own Alex Van Aken. How you doing? Hey, Wes. How are you? I'm doing great. And that is because I've been playing uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake. Do you know this anything is... about this game? No, but I'm looking at the uh, what's happening on screen right now, and it's... Uh very um wacky and perhaps whimsical yes it's a lot of that it is um a game that i probably put about 10 hours into over the past few weeks already um, yeah well it's i'm done with it now um, Oh, okay if you're uh watching this you can read my full review on gameforward.com i ended up giving it a seven um which i think is pretty good for this game um yeah that's actually it, higher than i think I was expecting. Yeah, it um it has a few issues. There are some bugs and I had three hard crashes, but the team is um, they have, you know, discussed to reviewers that they know some bugs are there and that they're going to work on fixing those. But nonetheless, I experienced them. So that kind of sucked. Um, and then weirdly enough, the my least favorite parts about the game's writing is when it specifically references a show which you would think is kind of like a highlight because, you know, Spongebob's... I love Spongebob. I don't know if you do, but I grew up on Spongebob. And, Me too. Um, yeah, so, but like Purple Lamp actually does a really good job. That's the developer, Purple Lamp. They do a really good job writing Spongebob, and I liked their original writing and uh, their own jokes and stuff. But when they force in their own... or when they force in references specific to the show, it kind of doesn't work, and I um, they get a little annoying. Like, you will hear the Krusty Krab Pizza song way too many times and oh no yeah and spongebob says uh, dabble do ya like uh, probably a hundred <laughs> times he just says it while walking around all the time but i mean i don't know are you are, this game's not really the story's there it's you know uh you did something there's a magical mermaid named cassandra who cracked open the nautical multiverse and now you got to travel to all these different universes of spongebob and collect his friends and rescue them okay so i heard multiverse so does that mean that this is not a like remake or remaster of an older game i'm not familiar with all the licensed spongebob games i knew that battle for bikini bottom rehydrated was you know um an older game that they brought back to life is this like a just a new a sequel yeah this is like a brand new thing it's um, oh that's cool i like yeah. that but that explains not, like the multiverse things that those are very in right now. Yeah, I know. On my, uh, I was talking with um, Kyle Hilliard, and he was. Uh, me and him were joking about Spider-Man turning everything into a multiverse now, uh, even SpongeBob. But I think it, it, it works pretty well. Um, what I didn't want from this game was just like another tour through Bikini Bottom because that's like every SpongeBob game, and we just got rehydrated. What last year or the year before that? Mm -hmm. um, and Bikini Bottom's here, and you do get to do stuff there, but most of the game happens in these different, um, you know, themed levels. There's the Wild West, there's a pirate one, there's, like, Medieval Times, you go to Glove World, lots of cool levels and stuff, um, and it's fun seeing how different uh, SpongeBob characters, like, slot in to these levels. Well, yeah, uh, is Patrick always a balloon? Yeah, so there's a fun joke. I won't spoil it here, because it was one of the jokes I really liked at the beginning of the game that basically ends up with him becoming a balloon, which I think was smart because it was a way for Purple Lamp to have SpongeBob, uh, to have Patrick tag along with SpongeBob for the entire journey um, without getting in the way. Like he just floats along with you and makes, you know, quips and stuff. And sometimes he gives you health. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Playing a SpongeBob game without Patrick by your side would be weird to me. Yeah, that's true. So it's a nice, it's a nice little touch they have. I, I mean, hearing that, that it's, it's, there are different themes is really fun just because, you know, there's only, like you said, there's only so many times you can take another tour through Bikini Bottom. Exactly. Um, and, and I'm actually, I think more excited about this game now. Um, I, I want to check it out based on, you know, hearing that. But, yeah, it's, it's a good, like, it's not, you know, it's not rush out and play it great, but like, if you like SpongeBob, or even like love SpongeBob. Like I legitimately love SpongeBob. Um, it's a show. I, I, I heartily do. like SpongeBob. Well, then I think you'd find enjoyment in this game too. Um, if you're someone who like doesn't like SpongeBob, then avoid this game completely. It's not, <laughs> a, it's not like a fantastic or even great platformer. Um, 
like this is a game I'd recommend to SpongeBob fans first. And then, you know, if someone's looking for a really great platformer, I don't know if this is necessarily that. But if you couple its gameplay with the SpongeBob stuff, I, I had a good time. I, I'm watching this. The level design seems pretty fun uh, in terms yeah. of, you know, uh, lots of lots of corners and little side paths, uh, which is, you know, what I look for in a platformer. So I guess they've got that mm -hmm. down. But yeah. I guess what, why why would you not recommend this to just somebody who's just a platformer fan and not a SpongeBob fan? Well, I mean, it's kind of basic and, um, you know, kids games can be challenging and fun and stuff. But like this is definitely a game made for children first. So like the difficulty is just not really there. I mean, OK, you are just walking around and you're jumping and you're collecting things and that's good fun. But like none of it is especially unique or something you haven't seen done elsewhere better before. Um, there's a lot to collect. There's golden spatulas. There's these jellies that you're seeing me collect right here. And you can unlock different costumes with those. There's um, like a 10 plus gold coins in every level. Uh, and there's like side objectives you can do. So like the collectathon aspect is there. I just don't really think the platforming is doing anything especially noteworthy. It's just, you know, it's your means to get around. That's fair. Yeah, uh, I do. There is one disappointment I want to air after watching this gameplay footage. Let's I think it. it would have been really great to have the, you know, he's got this pizza box that he's gliding with. I think it would have been fantastic if somehow Gary was his little parachute and he like grabbed Ooh. on by Gary's, you know, snail body a slime. Yeah. And then the shell was like the parachute or something. That would have been fun. That doesn't make been... sense, but probably fun. He's Gary's in the game. He has a he has a big role to play okay. um, that I won't spoil here. But uh, really, anybody you'd expect to see in a SpongeBob game is here. They even have the guy who loves chocolate and the dude. Oh, who's wow. OK, my leg all the yeah. time. Um, like they're all here and Sandy and Patrick and um, Plankton, Mr. Krabs, like they're all here. And I should note that they um, are all voiced by the show's actors. So that's cool. Yeah, the game feels very premium because of that. Uh, I don't know if I would have played much of this at all if they were not the TV uh, voice actors, because like, you know, I, I those are those characters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you hear them a lot. So hearing the actual voice actors is a really, really nice touch. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, uh, it does look I'm, premium, like even like the the visuals are very I mean, this is I imagine the same engine from Battle for Bikini Bottom hyd rehydrated and that game is just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and so it's good to see that back again. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, you're good. Actually, um, I wanted to touch on something you just mentioned is uh, the game does a good job like translating all of this to 3D. And I think sometimes like a 2D show, or, you know, especially in anime, we see this a lot, like switching to 3D becomes kind of just weird looking. But yeah, I think Purple Lamp did a really good job uh, getting that art style across. Like it still looks very SpongeBob. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, sick. I mean, uh, so I see, you know, we've got the jump, we've got uh, a little uh, attack and then we've got gliding. Does SpongeBob get any more abilities as the game goes on or is it kind of remain uh, in that wheelhouse? It kind of remains in that wheelhouse. You unlock like one or two other moves, but you're not. I didn't use them too much. You're mostly just jumping and like. Do I get an air dash? You do not get an air dash, but well, hold on. No, you don't get an air dash. No, there's like a grapple mechanic in one of the levels that kind of lets you dash through the air. But um, no, no, um, no air dash, no parries. Nothing like that. Word. Well, is this thing out now? This game is out tomorrow. If you're watching this on January 30th, which is when it went up. Um, so yeah, you don't have to wait too long. And it is on. I played it on PlayStation 5, but it's a PlayStation 4 game. Um, you can play it on Xbox One, which also means you can play it on Series X or S. It's on Switch and it's on PC. So you can basically play it anywhere and everywhere. 
Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's out tomorrow. It's a decent time. If you're a SpongeBob fan and you want to get back into this world, I would definitely recommend it. I think you'll have a good time. And yeah, I, th I think that that's going to do us for SpongeBob SquarePants, the cosmic shake. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alex. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. <laughs>